You won the game, but you don't want to come. All right, we're going to start with Michigan Press Conference. We're joined by head coach Jawan Howard, along with Hunter Dickinson and Kobe Bufkin. We'll start with an opening statement from Coach Howard, then we'll take questions for the student athletes, then we'll return to questions for Coach. Coach Howard? Uh, I would say good afternoon to everyone, but unfortunately it wasn't a good afternoon for us. Uh, we came up on the other end where we lost, uh, and it was a tough loss uh, for this team. Uh, for the coaching staff, and also for the university. Um, I'm proud of our young men on how they competed uh, throughout the season. Um, you know, obviously, uh, they wanted another outcome. Uh, they want to continue to keep playing throughout the tournament. Uh, I feel that, you know, throughout this season, with um, the adversity that we've been through, uh, I think we grew from it. And, and no, I really trust we, we did grow from it. And uh, I wouldn't want to be with any other group but this group uh, of young men that uh, I'm so proud of. Uh, neither one of them uh, from day one has ever pointed the finger at one another or blamed this guy, that guy, or the coach. Um, I'm so proud of how we always talk about being a family, and family was truly tested today and tested throughout the season. So uh, with that, um, I'll turn it over to uh, the questions for the players. Questions for the players, please raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you. Any questions? We'll start here in the front here with Tony, then we'll go to Andrew. Yeah, hey, Kobe Hunter, for, for both of you guys, when, when a few shots in the second half don't start going in, can, can sometimes that be contagious? Or I guess how would you guys qualify or classify sort of the one for 17 start in the second half? We'll start with Kobe and then Hunter. Um, I feel like sometimes it's just the way the ball bounces. Um, obviously, we didn't, we didn't get out to a great start in the second half, but we stuck through it. And um, the outcome just wasn't what we wanted. Hunter. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, you know, I feel like we had a couple good looks in there. Uh, like Kobe said, sometimes, you know, the ball just doesn't fall in the hoop. Andrew in the second row. Uh, you know, with your NCAA tournament hopes very much in doubt, I guess, how do you kind of assess, um, yeah, the season at large, given that what your goals were? Hunter. Uh, we talked about in the locker room that, you know, we'll wait till uh, we get back. Um, to talk about it as a group. Other questions for the student athletes? We'll go to the second row. Yeah, so Rutgers forced 14 turnovers, I think it was that game. And just some of the things they're doing defensively down the stretch really slowed you guys down. I guess, what did you see that made it so difficult? Kobe? Uh, I give, give credit where credit is due. Obviously, Rutgers is a very, a very good defensive team. Um, me personally, I felt like I probably played my worst brand of basketball on the worst day to play it. So seven turnovers is unacceptable, but give credit where credit is due. They're a very good defensive team. Tony in the front row. That was going to sort of sort of be my same question, but I guess uh, you guys had cut it to one. It was 40 to 39, uh, and then they hit a free throw, miss a free throw get the rebound, put it back. That sort of started a 12-0 run. Um, was that deflating at all? Or I guess, could you guys just talk about that moment and what that sort of started? Hunter. Yeah, um, you know, it is a little deflating. Uh, just a miscommunication um, between us, um, the guys out there. And uh, that's something we practice a lot and um, unacceptable. <laughs> I mean, the coaches emphasize it, um, you know, in practice and in timeouts of uh, one guy declaring the shooter, one guy um, pinching in. And so that's just, on the players on the floor to do a better job of communicating to one another. Go back to Andrew in the second row. I know it's hard to tell sometimes when the shots aren't going in, but, but what did you make of, I guess, the overall effort, especially maybe the last, the last 10 minutes of the game? Kobe? Uh, I feel like our effort was there. Um, I mean, when shots don't fall, you know, the, the game becomes tougher. But I feel like that's no excuse on the defensive end. And, um, yeah, just – this is unfortunate. Second row in the middle. You guys got out to a lead in the first half, and that was cut to just three at halftime. What kind of adjustments did you try to make at halftime, and how do you think you tried to implement them, and how do you think you maybe fell short? Hunter. Um, at halftime, we knew offensive rebounds was a big area of um, concern. They had eight, and so then um, you know we limited it to only four in the second half, but 12 offensive rebounds for a game is too much. Um, you know, it's already hard when we give up uh, 14 turnovers, two of which were mine. And so when you give them another 
12 extra opportunities on top of that. That's 26 um, extra possessions for them. And that's super hard for any team to, you know, try to come back from. And so for us, we just got to do a better job of, you know, making sure that coach always says that, you know, every possession matters so much. I'm just really trying to um, concentrate on that uh, motto. We have time for a few more for the student athletes. We'll go in the middle, third row. Uh, just the biggest lesson and biggest takeaway that you guys will take in uh, hopefully to next season. I guess, Hunter, starting with you. Hunter. Um, I think it was just a really good lesson for uh, the younger guys because uh, we had a pretty young team. Um, and so I think it was just a really good experience for them uh, to realize you know, how much these opportunities mean and how quickly they can go, um, especially once you get to March when you know you only got one game. Uh, my coach always says one game series. And so, um, you know, you just got to play your heart out. Um, every little mistake really adds up in the end. And so you just got to try to take every possession, um, you know, and, and, and have that possession mean everything for you. We'll take two more right hand side, third row. Is it for you to be the really only one, get it consistently going and to attract those double and triple teams in the post? I mean, it, it's, uh, I've been getting double teamed all year, and so, um, you know, I kind of had to accept that. Um, this game, though, I, I should have did a better job of, you know, trusting my teammates. Um, I think that's one thing. If I could go back and change is, you know, just try to kick it out a little bit more. Um, you know, I, I should have trusted my teammates more. They're obviously more than capable. Um, we got guys who, you know, will be playing professionally um, someday whenever they choose. And so I got I to gotta do a better job as a leader um, to trust my guys and instill that confidence in them. We'll go on the left-hand side. Last question for student athletes. Hunter, uh, did you see Rutgers do anything differently coming out of halftime um, to affect your scoring in the paint today? Uh, I think they were um, helping a little bit more in the paint, um, you know, just digging a little bit more, helping a little bit more, I think, in the first half. I uh, had a little bit um, more of a one-on-one -on -one opportunity, and I think in the second half, uh, they were trying to collapse a little bit more. All right, you guys can head back to the locker room. We'll continue with questions for Coach Howard. Great job, folks. Go Blue. If you have a question for Coach Howard, please raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you. We'll start all the way on the far left-hand side. It's a big three at the end of the first half. You got some momentum. How did you feel coming out of second half, and what went wrong that uh, – all of a sudden, the thing unraveled on you. In the second half, you're speaking of? Yes. Oh, well, in the second half, uh, you know, Hunter touched on some of it. Where I, th I, fought, I felt we pressed a little bit too much uh, as far as wanting to make, you know, the play individually. And uh, that, of course, uh, allowed uh, Rutgers to, you know, a capitalize on either um, some rush miss shots or um, turnovers. But uh, overall, like in the second half, you know, Offensively, for us uh, to be able to only make one you know, of four shots and you know shoot four for 21, and then um, you also add you know the, the turnovers and then uh, uh, offensive rebounds. You know it was just a really a rough second half for this group, and and at times we got a little you know, out of characteristic as far as what we do um, and stick to you know just keeping it simple like we did in the first half. Yes, they doubled, you know, the post, but, you know, we've been in the situations before all season long where they've doubled and we've made simple plays out of the post. And, and I'm not just, you know, please do not get this wrong here. Don't think that uh, I am blaming anyone. Uh, I'm just saying overall as a team, uh, we could have done our, a better good job of just being patient and making a simple play. Third row in the middle. Two weeks ago, you went to Jersey Mike's Arena and beat Rutgers by 13. Obviously, a different result this time out. What did you see differently from Rutgers this time out? Well, uh, you know, in the second half, of defensively for us, um, you know, we didn't do a good job of you know, keeping the ball in front. Um, I will also say this, too, that, you know, there were some open shots by them that they made where they were uncontested. Um, last time we played at Rutgers, we pretty much contested. Uh, the vast majority of any shot that was taken and also did a really good job of uh, protecting the paint. Um, the offensive rebounds, you know, I would also add to that as well. You know, Hunter touched on it earlier. Eight offensive rebounds in the first half, four in the second half, uh, giving them extra possessions. When we went to Rutgers, uh, you know, we were the aggressor and we won the rebounding game and we also did a really good job of keeping them off the glass. So. Uh, that's why I saw was the big difference compared to uh, the first time we played. 
We'll go to the far left, second row. Juwan over here. Um, there was a timeout early in the second half. You were telling your guys to keep your heads up. And, and Hunter mentioned it, the sort of deflating feeling there early in that stretch. Did you feel the energy level just oh, was yes. an issue? And, <laughs> oh. and, and why do you think that was? Yes. Uh, well, you know, everyone, you know, really cares uh, – about you know what happens in the outcomes of the ball game, and that's a beautiful thing to have when you talk about you know the entire team dialed into you know uh, giving to each other and want to see this everyone succeed out there on the floor and and love and to have the outcome in our favor, and then you know you notice in timeouts and you see that you know some dejected you know uh, unhappy young man, and it's an early part part where it's you know maybe. 10 minutes left or seven minutes left in a ball game. And I think it's my job as a leader to uplift them and encourage them uh, because, you know, I saw, you know, the looks on their faces and I've, you know, I've done a pretty good job of reading people. Um, and, you know, those young men that I've been around, I've, I've been in, you know, practice with them every day, uh, you know, been in the game situations, whether it's you know, pressure moments or whether it's uh, uh, where we are leading by a lot of points, or, I know them. And uh, that's the energy that uh, it, it, it made me feel uh, hurt for them, but at the same time, I wanted to uplift them. We'll go to the middle, third row. Coach, what can you say about Rutgers' performances on both the offensive and defensive side of the ball? Well, I mean, it's documented that Rutgers is one of the best de defensive teams in the Big Ten, and also as well as in the country. Um, one of the things that you know, they're missing, obviously, is one of their players, key players. Uh, but then overall, you know, you have to, you know, give you know Steve and his staff a lot of credit on how they have fought through adversity, just like we have. And uh, he's also been a great leader, you know, uh, to his his team and his st coaching staff. But one of their biggest strengths, and they laid a hat on, is playing with effort and playing with with toughness. And so. Um, that's one of the things that we've always emphasized when we game plan versus them is that you're going to get a team that's going to play hard every possession. And that's led by Cliff, you know, their starting center. You know, their team feeds off his energy. And as you can see in the second half, you know, he was very active out there, you know, contesting shots, blocking shots. You know, his presence in the middle, you know, affected us. We'll go to Dana in the third row and then finish with Andrew. Javon, um, you mentioned that they were pressing a little bit. There was a lot potentially riding on this particular game. Do you think that they felt that at some point? Well, I mean, this world is, you know, is surrounded by, the, you know, so much information. And the information can be delivered to you instantly. Like, and I call it a microwave world because, uh, you know, not only that there's so much information out there, you know, that our young man is able to, to see it, read it, and, you know, they understood the magnitude of this game and they've heard it so many times from you know media or whether it's social media you know how you know every game is important and what lies on it and what your fate will look like if you can move forward uh to move to advance to the you know ncaa tournament and uh Rutgers was aware of their situation as well because you know it's, this so we all knew it was going to be a big game uh and every game that pretty much we face has, has been big games and i'm just so proud and i say it again of how our guys competed all year. Um, yes, we have a young team, but we do not make excuses. Uh, that's how you, you grow, uh, by getting the opportunity. And we've had, you know, four freshmen that start, and Kobe being one of those four freshmen because he didn't play last year. Uh, we also had, you know, Terrace Reed, who's another freshman that comes off the bench. Um, and he gets, you know, a lot of minutes as well. So uh, this is a growing, um, opportunity for our young men. I think they grew up a lot this year. Yes, they want to continue to keep playing. I want to see them playing. I want to be out there coaching them uh, in the postseason. But, you know, we'll come back home. We'll talk about, you know, what's the plan for the future, and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. We'll finish with Andrew in the second row. Ron, I, I was going to ask, what are, what are your hopes for I the postseason? I just said it. We'll talk about it when we get home. Okay. That's all. Thank you. Thank you.